Hi guys, my name is Brian Nystrom and you are listening to the Greenlight Weekend Podcast. Um, it's quarantine time, uh, everybody's stuck inside, as such I happen to uh, just record a bunch of podcasts and now I kind of got to clear some shit off of my hard drive because I got more podcasts coming up, so we got a lot of content coming for the uh, quarantine times. Um, this one is quarantine episode number four with our good friend Dave Oakley. It's just me and Dave. Um, Phil's still uh, locked down, which is super understandable. He's got a kid on the way, so uh, less than a month till his kid's here. So he's definitely trying to play it safe, and I totally respect that. But we got the phone thing going, so we're gonna be we're gonna be calling Phil soon. Um, we got a new one coming with Dave today and then i'm recording one with dave tomorrow then we got emma it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time of podcasting i'm trying to keep the circle limited but also have a good time you know what i mean fuck it everybody's quarantined anyway so as long as their households seem to be doing fine i'm kind of willing to roll the dice a little bit with one person at a time um yeah but if you want to find Dave Oakley, it's his birthday episode. This is part two. We released part one a couple days ago. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, it's on YouTube. If you haven't seen it yet, this will be on YouTube. Um, but yeah, if you want to find Dave, Dave Oakley on Facebook at Dave O Laughs on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, follow Comic Uprising on Facebook and at Comic Uprising on Instagram if you want to find us. Uh, on Instagram at GLW underscore podcast. Uh, Greenlight Weekend on YouTube and Facebook. Three words. Greenlight Weekend. That's the podcast. Yay. Uh, and greenlightweekend at gmail.com if you uh, want to get a hold of us. Also, if you have any music, if you're a musician that listens to this regularly, I'm open to taking music to use as the intro and outro music. Not that I don't love Ethan Esparza, but I'm willing to mix it up if it if I like it, you know what I mean? So if you're a musician, send us stuff, greenlightweekend at gmail.com. I'll be happy to listen to it and maybe implement it into the podcast, especially now that we're doing so many with the quarantine thing. This is four in a week, which is unprecedented for us. So at least I'm having a good time during the quarantine. You know what I mean? I hope you guys are having a good time. I hope this helps pass your boredness. Um, I'm going to get over it with this intro. Get over it. Yeah. Uh, check out Kate McLaughlin on YouTube. She does makeup with Kate. You can also find her on Facebook, Kate McLaughlin. She's doing some super funny shit during this quarantine. Everybody should see it. All right. Um, and as always, thank you to Ethan Esparza at Hip Hop Trip on SoundCloud. The link is in the, in the description. He does all the intro outro music. I love that motherfucker. He's going to be here 4th of July, depending on this coronavirus thing, I guess. Fuck. If this shit robs of robs us of our podcast with ethan i'm gonna be bummed out but we shall see all right guys enjoy this episode Circle with the homies still rapping on Dilla. Yeah, rapping all the spots I live, the people know I killed them. That's right. They'll turn off the lights, give me a light. We the brightest in this building. And throw up them hands if y'all really feel me. That's some realness, it's chronic flow. Yeah, got a chronic illness, and I want the world to feel this. Yo, that's just how I kill it. How do I cure it then? Ah. They wondering about the antidote. Just put them headphones on, man. That's the dope. Yeah. Give them a dose of rap. rap. Then I can toast to that. Yeah. Knew that I hold my craft. Doing it, I'm in a soul to rap. This American cat cow. My ears ain't wet. My ears ain't wet. All I want to do is pee on poo. What? <laughs> you want to pee on poo? I don't want to pee on anybody else. I just want to pee on my poop. Huh. I, don't really I think it's that. gross when people like to get pissed on. Okay. So the only peeing I'm doing is on my poo. Okay. Apocalyptic times thoughts. Hmm. See when so you, you say like to that, pee on people? Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. When you said pee on poo, what I thought of is like cleaning a toilet that has poo stains while peeing on oh, it. Oh, you know, that's that, what that's I thought th of. Yeah, that's the only way I know how to clean the toilet bowl, really. Exactly. That's what I thought of. <laughs> and then you went a whole no. other way with it. Oh, I'm talking right about the bat. dropping a log in there and then just peeing on that instead of peeing on a person. I dated this girl once. And I don't know why peeing on a person has to be an option. Like, you could I don't just... Know, dude. I dated this girl once 
And <laughs> this is so fucked up. 30 days into like us dating, we were driving to downtown Atlanta on our way to this uh this venue called the Masquerade that's not there anymore. We were going to a show. And uh she was talking about a friend of hers that had never been that was a prostitute. Mm. And I just kind of like half jokingly said to her, I was like, well, you never did that shit, right? And she goes, well, I was going to wait a little bit before I told you about that. And it turns out she was a hooker in Atlanta for years before. And one, and she told me this story. How old were you? I was 22, 23. How old do you think she was? I know she, she she's. Your age? I, I, yeah, yeah. My age, a little oh, younger, yeah. maybe. I mean, like so hard maybe times. a year. I was a junkie, dude, and I thought I loved this girl. So I just, I still stayed with her for like eight months. We ended up getting a house together, and and she had a two-year-old whose father was in maximum security prison here in Colorado and got out and came back to Georgia and threatened to kill me. And she made sure that I knew that when he threatens to kill me, it's not a... uh, an idle threat like you know don't piss this guy off and it was all weird but i just huh. remember her telling me there was this mexican dude that always met up with her in, in midtown atlanta at this hotel and all he wanted to do was piss like she, he he wanted her so she to kept piss hooking. on him yeah piss in her mouth and that is but just she so kept gross. hooking no uh, no no not, not when we were together oh, as okay. far as i know no right. did <laughs> but, she have a job uh yeah, I met her at my job, at my at the restaurant I worked at. No, nah, I met her at the restaurant I was working at in Atlanta. And she was working there. Not like working, working. But no, but she was employed at the restaurant. Yes. Oh yeah, yes. that's what I meant. So yeah. you, but she told, you know she had a job. She had okay. a job at the time, and I didn't. I I truly believed her when she said she wasn't doing that shit no more. But I still stayed with her. I was such a like an insecure, fucked up junkie that. I mean, that's a deal breaker. I don't think somebody that used to be a prostitute is necessarily... Telling me stories about how Mexican dudes just fucking hire her just to piss in their mouths. Like, that's fucking weird. Just to piss in their mouths. Yes. Yeah, like she would squat over them and piss in their mouths. No, it's weird. It's so weird. Yeah, that's more than I want to hear from the love of my life. I'll give you that. (laughs) So when I say I'm only going to piss on poo... (laughs) <laughs> that's what i mean okay i'm never gonna piss on a person it's so weird to me and i know it came out of left field considering it was that's the, how you started the <laughs> podcast the first sentence of the podcast i we guess we didn't I talk was... about it before <laughs> i know there is no yep I we've didn't... been together for hours you never mentioned anything about it you I just know. came out i only piss on poo what's up <laughs> yeah dog <laughs> dude i'll take a big old dump and piss on that shit but i am not gonna piss on a person yeah, cause and I don't know why I decided to open with that. Ah, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, it's I once ain't. you hear that metronome, but it just <laughs> switches something in you. You're just like, all right, what's my opening oh joke? My God. We got to set the tone. Yeah. <laughs> I only piss off poo. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, she sent me a friend request a few weeks ago with a brand new hippie ass name on, on Facebook. Is it Moonchild or it something? It was like something starshine okay i'm not gonna say the first one because people can look that up but yeah then it's starshine and like she was gonna have a solstice party that she invited me to and it's all weird yeah it's all weird then you didn't go no i was here and i wouldn't go anyway because i fucking don't like that woman i'm pretty sure because i check this out i was so naive at the time that that dude that she said was not like he would really kill me. Yeah. He baby came daddy. over to the baby daddy came over to the house that um she lived at and I was there and he came with his best friend and then she suggested that I ride with his best friend to the gas station to go pick up some snacks and what, I was like, fuck? "Okay, yeah." Well, yeah. I was gone, dude, and like I was just so dumb. I didn't even How old are you again? Like I said, 22, 23. 22, 23, okay. And like, but, That's a dumb person. But junkie. But junkie, yeah, though. Like me, I was a, 22 I was is so a fucking fucked idiot, up. too. I used to, like, we would go to places, like her friend's house, and I snuck needles and dope in, and I would go to the bathroom. And I so would, you were I, concerned with doing drugs. and Well, she caught me many times, and she wasn't happy about it. But, like, but she was fucking her baby daddy, yes, so she was like, yes, whatever. So it's like, this guy's paying half the bills. It was all fucked up, man. You were living with her? I did for a while, and then I kicked her out 
uh, at a certain point, like shortly after that incident where, uh, you know, you it was the gas just, station. Yeah, where I went to the gas station. <laughs> What'd you get? Like Doritos so or something? No, candy bars Fudgets? and shit. Yeah, yeah, like it was nothing good. <laughs> I mean, I was just so dumb and naive, and she was just such a slut. She just wanted. But you were dick. just doing drugs, and but that was she probably wasn't. That good I was dick. doing. I was doing drugs secretly. Yeah, but that was probably that good dick, you know. And she knew <laughs> yeah, you were she doing that, drugs. She got that prison dick. I got to do some drugs and candy bars. Bro, like, it was great. I got to tell you, when I came out of jail, I fucked hard. Mm-hmm. I was in there for less than a month, like <laughs> just a little. This guy but was years. I still fucked hard. You know, he fucked with the Aryan nation when he was in there. Like, yeah. it's not a good dude, man. Like, he was scary. Yeah, and definitely. I'm very glad to be distanced from those people right now. And that guy threatened you. <laughs> oh, yeah. For straight up. And she told me because like I was She's like, I yeah, was, just so you know, he's not to be fucked. Yeah. With. And I was fucked up. So, so what do you do? Because she said that to me because I was like fucked up one day and I was like, oh, he ain't going to do nothing. She's like, dude, no, like, listen to me. He. He's not kidding. Like if he if he if he threatens you like that again, like you can't come around him at all. Like, but it, what does she mean come around him? Are were you going around him, or was she bringing no, him around you? It, that's what so. It that's was. on her. I Fuck know. That bitch. I, why I left. I know exactly because she tell she said that shit to me, and then she invited him over to our house to visit his child. I get and uh, I and I, I I had to like try that's to that's a more of a I, park situation. I tried to be, be cord. I was just trying to be cordial. Out it's of, his kid. <laughs> it's what his are you kid. gonna do? And that's what I said, dude. I was like, dude, it's your kid. Come see your fucking kid. But like, you know, I also was just trying to be like, did hey, you set d- boundaries <laughs> verbally? No. Like, don't. Fuck no, with I was like, anything. here, you see your kid. I'm gonna go buy some dope. I told her I, I told her so many times that I was going to buy Suboxone or Methadone when I was really going downtown. I almost got arrested downtown one time buying dope when she was back at the house with the kid. Like And him? No, he wasn't uh. there that day. But like, you know, I was just lying to her about being buying a junkie. Yeah. And I lit where I lived at the time was only I mean, fifteen minute drive max to South Atlanta where I was on the north side, but yeah. it was like, I mean, only a few miles from uh, downtown Atlanta. Isn't but it was, crazy that 15 minutes in Atlanta is like, I was just 15 minutes away. Where in Durango, you'd be like, I was like 15 minutes away. So I had to make it quick. You know, <laughs> like 15 minutes away here is quite a ways. It's, it's, yeah, it's a little bit different in the city, yeah. I guess. I mean, also, there's a lot of traffic. Atlanta was notorious for that. For sure. But, yeah, like, I would lie to her all the time and tell her I was going to do shit and go pick up drugs because, like, I started realizing what was going on. I started realizing she was banging this dude when I went to the gas station. I started realizing that just this bitch is crazy. She, she's crazy. There's no I just, condoms. I need yeah, to get no right. condoms, a lot of butt <laughs> stuff. It was weird. <laughs> Just like I decided, this is not what I want. I don't want someone that wants it up the butt every day. Like that's weird. That's not my favorite either. I, it's just I'm not a fan. Weird. Like when I went to on take your a- birthday, sure. You know, <laughs> you get me drunk enough, I'll put it in your butt. But it's not. It's not a sober activity. <laughs> it's not good. And it was. It was. Well, None of actually, that. I was never sober. But right. like in her mind, it was. Cause like she was sober. She was sober and she still just slutted it up. And you were just doing it. I just dope. went with it because I was just a junkie at the time. This was heroin? Uh yeah. This is during the bad parts of Crazy. it. Crazy. Yeah. And yeah, and I like I said, I lived like fifteen minutes from my guy uh in, in South Atlanta and I would just tell her all sorts of excuses and just go buy dope. Right. All the time and yeah for why you were gone yeah and there's a lot of reasons man because i could get leave there, the house i could get there and back in 30 minutes and, and do dope on the way home before i get back you know and eventually were I, you like smoking it no it? shooting it shooting it yeah damn so i had to pull over straight <laughs> john travolta oh yeah no bueno that's man. one of the best scenes of pulp of fiction it. is right yeah. after he shoots up and he's driving the impala just uh-huh going. yeah oh oh every day it was, was like that, that? every was day it awesome no nah, man. Was it like I mean, riding a wave, or was it paranoia? It, I wasn't paranoid, which is weird. But I was just so fucked up out of like I wasn't paranoid at all. Like I would typically, like, uh, go in um, to the bluffs, come out, and just go like I mean sometimes as close as like 
two blocks away outside of the bluffs and just pull over. And where do you pull over? So I would pull over. All right, there's two main places. One was behind this building and this avenue off 10th Avenue. Like a rundown in building? No, I mean, it was like. Was it a business? It was a business, yeah, but okay. it was like it, sometimes it'd be like four or five in the morning. But you could be but outside. During the middle nobody of the, give a shit. But during the middle of the day, what I would do is I would pull into a parking lot of this like healthcare facility, this big ass building, and there was just so many cars, and I just felt like I blended in. So during the day, I would do that. It's like selling drugs. Yeah, it's, doing during drugs, the same shit. Trying to like blend in, yeah. and then during the middle of the night, I would go to this fucking alley a couple blocks away off Tenth Avenue. And one day I was, it was like five in the morning. I was just, I had just prepared a shot. I put it into my arm and right when I did, before I even like released it, yeah. knock on my window. And it, <laughs> I was like, holy shit, dude. I put down the window. I'm like, what's up? Needle it's still in hum- your arm? No, I pulled it out. And I put it between it? my legs. Yeah. So we couldn't see because I didn't know who it was. And it was just a fucking homeless guy. And as soon as he made that clear, I just went off on him. And, like, I yelled at him so hard. He just fucking ended up. Like, he walked away from me, which never happens. And no like, gun. No. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no real gun. threat of harm. Man, I was just terrified. Just yelled at like, he, Yeah, because he startled the fuck out of me dude like that's no, rude yeah I, I, he just knocked him on i mean r- i mean it could when you're shooting up like, in an alley the last thing you want is a homeless that's guy right. knocking on your window and it was like a goddamn like i mean seriously the timing that you would see in a movie right when i did it before i pulled back the plunger yeah. the <laughs> on my window and then i put the window down because i was scared and I, I i mean he knocked like a cop i thought it was a cop so i fucking put down the window i'm like yes sir and then there's this guy asking me for a dollar and I put the window up and started screaming at him. And he fucking he he actually ran off because I was withdrawing. I was cranky. I was like, don't fuck with me right now, dude. I haven't done this shit in like eight hours. Like <laughs> eight hours <laughs> I, I, is withdrawal at that point. I mean, dude, I so you were deep is what's going on here. I don't times. understand heroin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first couple times you do it, you can do it. If like without any sort of like a, a withdrawal, but once you start building any sort of tolerance, yeah. then it's like you start feeling a little bit of something after the high wears off. And depending on how much you've done, it may it, it will last a certain amount of time. But it got to the point, dude, where I was buying like a fifty bag at eleven o'clock at night, going home, shooting that up, and then waking up at five in the morning withdrawing. And going right back down six hours later, dude. And going after six after, hours after buying, after buying and doing a fifty bag. Wow. I would have. To, I would go back. To, I would That's wake crazy. up withdrawing, like sweating, like, and and then I would drive right back into town and fucking and get more. And I would do that sometimes two, three times a day for multiple years. God damn! It, How do you support that, dude? It was crazy. I, I mean. It just happens. Well, like, well, all of my money. I mean, for one, I stayed at my folks' house for a lot of that time because right. I was such a fuck up and a failure. Uh, well, but, what? So your folks were religious. What was that kind of like? That was what was beca- your living situation? Well, eventually they realized they in the basement. So, no, no, no. We didn't have a basement, <laughs> but like, I had my own room. Right. And I hid it as long as I could, but eventually I told them like I'm having real bad drug problems and really? they're like i didn't well we thought something was wrong with you but they didn't know i mean that's got to be a desperate like moment to where you're willing to tell your parents like, oh it was awful man yeah, yeah i mean it was about 100% something that desperate. serious yeah. yeah because like you know it's like i just assumed they would get mad at me right but like at, now that i'm older i see like they would just be concerned well, about at that me point, and like yeah so like i went because they realize you're desperate if you're telling them mm-hmm. to you know oh right and i went through several like withdrawals on their couch and they were like knowing what was going on and supportive and, and well i mean like they, no, they didn't, they didn't really know how, they didn't they didn't kick me out so i guess they're supportive in that and but they just didn't know how to be like supportive it was just kind of like they were just watching me be miserable for weeks at a time sometimes and well did they bring you like chicken noodle soup and shit like i mean i i think so dude i mean like 
in a manner of speaking. You I'm, got like, fed. I got fed. Yes, I got fed. Dude, that's more than. And supportive. I had a roof over my head. Yeah, I know. You're right. You're right. But taxpayers didn't very even light. have to pay for that shit. You know? <laughs> yeah, and and but like this went on for years of me trying to quit, dude. So yeah. like I kept on disappointing them time at time after time, where I would end up like. They'd be like, oh, you seem good today. I'm like, yeah. It was just because I just came from downtown. Right. You know, and the way they would say, you seem good today, made it, they were like, you, you did just got today? high, did yeah. you, didn't you? Yeah, and it made me feel like shit, dude. It really made me feel bad. Yeah, but that's self-inflicted guilt, you know? it's. But also, they were right. <laughs> They're like, dude, we're exactly. trying to help you. Yeah. We're trying to help you, and you just keep not helping yourself. Dude, and I got to be honest, I have uh, a family member that's kind of in this situation who has just received, like, so much support over the years. But it's been since I was, like, 15, you know? So 15 years. And he's still going through it? shit's still going weird. And it's not necessarily... It's not heroin, you know? And it's not necessarily drug related but maybe alcohol related or whatever Mm -hmm. but just the amount of and he has three kids you know so my parents took in the kids and they're they're not gonna starve or it you know they're gonna be taken care of but Uh it's still just like how long you know what i mean before you get your shit together is this gonna be forever Mm -hmm. because i kind of had an uncle who a great uncle my great uncle jim and he became successful financially and uh i think he moved to the middle of nowhere because that's where opportunity was uh for like oil and gas and shit Mm -hmm. and made a lot of money but i think he secretly wanted to die he just drank and did like meth and drugs and fucking he was constantly living with strippers prostitutes whatever yeah just constantly a sugar daddy but he had enough money to support that but i who's to say that's wrong you know what i mean he Uh, died at like 85 he lived a full life and he lived that life for 50 years easy you know what i mean (laughs) if that's your prerogative if that's your fucking run if you want to have fun every moment of every day and you make it to 85 like right Who's to say that's wrong? That's what I'm saying. Like, I agree. You know, for me, I decided it was wrong. But you were young. I was also, like, I I think 25 when I finally had done heroin for the last time. You know, and now today I'm 34. So, God bless. Like, I'm happy about that. Happy birthday, my friend. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Salute. Might have not happened. You know what I mean? Like, realistically. Yeah. I mean, and then don't get me wrong. Like, I was on that box and for years... After after I got married when I was 25 and yeah, but you have the most supportive wife ever. Yeah, but I've put her through hell. And I'm sure she, so I'm sure she's a little aggressive when you start pushing limits on mm-hmm. things like that. You know what I mean? She's just like, Dave, you know what the fuck is up? Like yeah. well, I've seen her get a little Dave. aggressive with you. Yeah, David only. Really? She doesn't call me Dave. Really? Never has. Yep. Okay, I believe you. I I don't pay a lot of attention. I'm going to be honest. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, a piece of shit. Just tell it. Nope. I appreciate Nobody it. Nobody really knows that. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just a fact. Fun fact. Fun fact. Cat only calls me David. Okay. Yep. Good to know. But, uh, yeah, David. Yeah. But yeah, she, she keeps you in check because she's been through the hard times. But the, the level of loyalty. That's is, right. That's, and I think that's a big part of why your guys' relationship is so strong. That's it's, part of it, dude, is like that the level of loyalty she's shown has made me love her so much that that love keeps me in check. Right. You know, it's like, I like for a long time, I felt like, fuck you. You're just trying to hold me back and keep me from doing it. Now I'm like, God bless you. You, you love me so much that you have stuck with me through these bullshit parts. And I, have you know fallen so in love with you that i just don't want to do anything that's going to make you upset you know and so it's like i i i don't i don't want to fuck up for my own self but i also don't want to fuck up because i feel like this woman that's shown me so much love is only worthy of the best and if i 
ever went back to drugs, I would be as far from my best as possible. For sure. Well, that's kind of how it happens. Yeah. You yeah. slowly allow yourself to be more of a piece of shit. And, Absolutely. And alcohol and is starts, similar, but God similar, damn it. But it's not the same, dude. It's not. I'm telling from experience. I love it. Yeah. I and drink, dude. I've never done heroin or yeah. anything. Yeah. I've done cocaine, but I've always only bought a gram. You know, it's never. Right. I've never allowed myself to get to the point of crossing my moral lines or anything mm. just because, well, financially it's not <laughs> practical. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also I have done drugs for a long time and I understand how you could fall into them. Because I've seen it. And it's tricky, dude. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I've always said But that's that why I've been scared of like, heroin yeah. i hear it's awesome and if it wasn't for like the major kind addictive the issue i would have tried it yeah and meth too i Dude, i hear it's I, not terrible I and i've to, probably tried it being raised religious <laughs> i used to fucking equate heroin eventually to satan like i because it's like tricky. I like that. you could yeah. do it a couple times intermittently and be completely fine dude and just like, wow, yeah, that was a cool experience or whatever. But before you know it, you're going downtown three times a day dealing it, with the sketch. Dude, like it's the perfect metaphor. For example, like, you know, like one day I was pretty broke, dude. I had I think seventy five bucks on me. I went into the hood. I spent I've been broker than that. I spent twenty five dollars on a bag of dope. I went around fake. the corner. I think I might have told this Go story ahead. before. Sorry. No, it's okay, bad. but you're right. Yeah, it was fake. And I just I was still in the bluffs and so like I went back around to a different corner, bought twenty five dollars worth. I went around the corner, shot it up again. It was fake. Again. There was nothing. And you shot them up both? Yeah. Dude, so you put that in your veins. Yeah, dude. And and probably That's many crazy. worse many worse things i imagine do one time uh well i'll get to that in a second but then yeah so you did i went back time. the third time and and i got i bought a 25 bag i got it it was real but it was really just a 10 dollar bag yeah. so i spent 75 bucks on a, a 10 dollar bag. bag because of like and you just, were happy i wasn't happy i was i was pissed because i knew i got ripped off but at least i wasn't withdrawing so i was happy about that crazy thing it's fucking psychotic at least i wasn't withdrawing yeah is the reason yeah it it, it reasoning so oh to answer one of your questions from earlier how did i fund it like that's what i would do is i would go in the morning like early and i would do dope because it would take away my withdrawals and then I would go fucking door to door knocking on people's uh, doors asking if I could mow their lawn around like Atlanta and Marietta. And then when I made enough money, I'd go right back downtown. But you mowed buy... their lawns? Oh, yeah. While I was still kind of high. While I wasn't withdrawing. Respect. No, dude. Respect. <laughs> it's like any any old joke. What's going on over there? Oh, shit. It's my wife. Should I answer it? Sure. Hey. You're on speaker. You haven't started yet. You're on the podcast. All right, what's up, baby? Hey. So, uh, Dan just uh, hit me up on our switchback, and he was just seeing how we're doing. He invited me down. They're closed today. So, him and Lindsay were just, it's just them and me at the bar, and we had a couple of drinks, and he gave me a bag of corned beef hash to take home. Oh, fuck yeah, what? that's good. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are, are you on the way back home now? I'm, I'm already home. Hey. <laughs> corned beef hash. <laughs> Happy St. Patty's Day. This shit was going to go bad if I didn't give it away well, today. Everything's, you know, a little delayed this year, so we're going to have St. Patty's on your birthday, I guess. That's what's up. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, yep. But yeah, but yeah, so I, I hit up Kelly to see if she wanted to come up there, but she, she's going to be working possibly till 7, but I'll hit you up around then and see what's up. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up when I'm done. All right, baby. I love you. All right, love, love you. Bye. Bye. Love you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> that's cat cat oakley that's funny I'm glad you noticed that because i certainly didn't what my phone oh yeah i didn't I, notice it was vibrating over there i got the the headphone <laughs> i noticed any outside noise yeah after editing so many pot i bet over a yeah. hundred yeah you, yeah just, over a hundred now because 
Yeah, the quarantine Shit. episodes, dog. Yeah, this yep. is number four. This is technically one hundred and three, but it's technically number four. Yeah, quarantine episode <laughs> number four. Yeah, episode one hundred will be a <laughs> celebration of Philip's child, <laughs> <laughs> and we will celebrate like fucking gentlemen. Damn right, dude. We're we gonna get hammered and drink baby blood. Maybe a little baby blood. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. We're going to circumcise the child, obviously, and grill that up. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> We've talked so much against circumcision on the podcast, and that just guys? makes me giggle. Well, we I'm just unsure. If you had a son, would you cut his dick? Yeah. Really? Why? Because you're Polish? I think so. Uh, yeah. I, I'm unsure about it because it's... You know, on, in modern times, granted, the quarantine <laughs> has changed things. Yeah, you cut that dick. Yeah, but, but can't you get some fucking... I don't know, man. But is is it for aesthetics? Yeah, dude, goddamn right, dude. I do yeah, not but, want no girl sucking my son's dick and being grossed out. Is it gross? I don't know. But I've, I've got those. It's like I've got pussy. the circumcised it's one. E- it's like eating pussy. The girl has to go through exactly what you have to go through mm. if they want to go down on you. Mm. There's a mucous membrane. There's a whole. They should thing. go to Egypt. No, chop that clip, bro. That I'm is just kidding. That is the worst. I'm just you kidding. will never be able to please your woman. I know. No feeling. No, that it's the worst idea kidding. ever. It's I the know. worst idea ever. God damn it! You the green light weekend is against female circumcision. All in all, we we don't well, draw any hard lines on male circumcision for, as of now. Or male circumcision. No, we don't. We don't draw any hard lines now. <laughs> Fuck you, Dave. You're you're new. Fuck off. I'm not new, dude. I've been here since compared episodes. to 100 episodes. If I was at like 40. So, so say there was 100 mics and you came to like seven. How about I put on all 100 of those mics because it's Durango. But you Son wouldn't have came bitch. to just seven. Say if okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I pay respect to the open mic <laughs> Yay. host of Durango. Yay. I love you very much. Oh, I respect off. you very much hey, go, go for putting on off. shows. But say you weren't the host. Say you were the one guy. Okay, there's a few guys that we know that 100 mics have come to, come to seven. Do you consider that guy a regular or? No. Exactly. That's what you are on the podcast, so you have no say on the <laughs> circumcision. <laughs> you got me there, bro. You got me there. Yeah. Well, Phil, before he knew he was having a girl, was very concerned about this, and he's like, I don't want to cut my kid's dick. Like, it's it's a big risk factor. I, it's not that much of the population that has bad experiences, but Alejandro San- Sanchez came on. Alejandro Sanchez. Yeah. yeah he came on. Rider. The bike, bike rider. rider. He rode his bike from Santa Fe to Durango for the Four Corners Comedy Festival. He is on that wall. You can't see it. Go fuck yourself. But yeah, damn right. um he's very for circumcision and Phil didn't know what sex baby he was having. And Alejandro was like, You have to circumcise your baby. Phil was like, You're not a doctor. You know, and it was just <laughs> going back and forth. <laughs> so let me guess. Alejandro is not circumcised, and Phil is. Alejandro is circumcised. Really? Yeah, and uh, he was going to have a baby, but uh, things went bad, so he didn't. Miscarriage kind of stuff. Yeah, but they talked about it on the podcast. His wife talked about it on the podcast, so Ooh. I can talk about it. Yeah, you got um, right. Yeah, that's how I justify <laughs> things. Um, but luckily, Phil's having a girl, so he doesn't have to worry about that. But Phil's having a fucking baby in less than a month. Yeah. Yeah. He should always. But wait, I felt like you were building up to something and I feel like you forgot. I lost my place. I feel like you forgot. <laughs> what were we honest. talking about? Circumcision and Phil's uh, baby for some okay. reason. That's well, weird. I'm never going to say that sentence again. I just don't know if Oof. it's quite necessary anymore. Luckily, my plans just got called off for tonight. So. <laughs> We're getting fucked up. Yep. Hi, bud. We're doing more podcasts, motherfuckers. <laughs> We're doing five podcasts this week. It's Pucks and Tony Phil. Pucks and Tony Phil day. Groundhog yeah. day. Spring's not keep, coming, bitch. It's doing, winter. We're going to keep doing the same podcast over and over again. Dude, I feel like we've definitely... We, we got into some deep shit this podcast. Yeah. And then I 
turned it into circumcision like a piece <laughs> of shit. We well, that's were, your style, dude. It was therapy. We were going through some real shit, getting a real story, <laughs> and I turned it into circumcision like a fucking asshole. Like a comedian. God so I'm glad it. you did it. I can't get on stage right now, so I'm really filtering it's myself good. through my friends. I'm glad you did it. Trust me. I, would, <laughs> I think I'd rather not talk I f- about I that shit. I feel like I got I pretty deep in the story, though. Well, it's I felt, fucked up. Because uh, during it, I was like, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. <laughs> Cause I just cause it was going so good. We were learning about the human psyche, you know. Oh shit! Yep. And homeless people knocking on windows at the wrong time. And, yeah, we were learning. Yeah, if you're homeless, uh, <laughs> in Durango, I don't hate you, but get your shit together. <laughs> don't knock on a bear's eye. For sure, don't knock on windows asking for a dollar. Dude, that my window terrible. has a gun in it, and if I'm scared. I was taught not to pull a gun unless you're going to fire the gun. So if I pull a gun, right. I'm going to fire a gun. And don't scare people, man. Dude, it's bad. I just realized like, if I was smart before I rolled down that window, I would have shot the dope up just so I got high before I got arrested in case it was a cop. But I was dumb. Just thought of that. Do you think the, the needle was visible from the window? <laughs> Dude. So yes. Everybody knows what that looks like, dude. Yeah. So, yes. yes. That's why he was probably he, yeah. Fucking asshole. Man's got dope. Man's got money. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I was in an old beat up Buick. Remember when I talked about the Buick? Yeah. That's what I was in. I was in an old beat up Buick. The smashed fucking headlight in this back alley. Did the headlight work? One of them worked one, one of them worked yeah. and you were doing heroin <laughs> in this car well i didn't have the headlights you're just on. looking to get pulled over i didn't have the headlight yeah i was looking yeah to get- but after you shoot up oh after i gonna- shot up guess what i didn't give a fuck after, yeah but if soon- you get pulled over no, you know you're fucked i know it's really bad and that's part of the why i call the it addiction. satan yeah. because it's like i fuck as in my mind at that time i just had to fucking Get high, and then I could deal with anything else in the world, including yeah. dealing with a cop, including going and mowing lawns, including going to a regular job. Like, I just thought I could handle anything as soon as I just got those withdrawals out of my system. I understand it's that. It's fucked up. Dude. I've I've had that with alcohol. And if I'm going to be honest, uh, getting arrested and going on probation is what made me an alcoholic because before that... So I got arrested, you know, like three months before I turned 21. And the court date happened two days before I turned 21. Uh-huh. So two days before I turned 21, they said, I cannot drink. I cannot do any drugs for two years. Uh-huh. And I was a 20-year-old, almost 21, ready. Just, Yeah. Just a fucking ready to come. person. Yeah. Come all over the Just world. About to come all over the world. That <laughs> that's the best way I've heard it described. <laughs> so yeah, I my second court date, uh allegedly, me and my <laughs> mom, I got sentenced to probation. I took a piss test. Um I hadn't smoked weed for a while, you know, since before I went to jail. I was scared. So I hadn't smoked weed. I had drank, but not even close to the court date, and took a piss test, left the courthouse, allegedly went straight to Lady Falkenberg's, got fucking shit housed with my mom and my best friend, mm-hmm. and that's how I treated probation. Like, piss tests matter, everything in between does that's not. Right. So I was on drug court for like three, four months, twice a week, randoms. No alcohol tests. So since I went to drug for, right. I went to jail for drugs. Uh, there was no alcohol test, so I was just drinking through all that, doing the piss test, whatever. And then, um, uh, it was, it came to once a month, which meant the green light weekend started, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. So, the Friday I would take a piss test, which was scheduled. That weekend, I'd go out to the lake where Phil lived. We'd mm-hmm. get fucking hammered, allegedly, and <laughs> just do all kinds of drugs. And 
I wouldn't do them for the rest of the month. I gave myself four days to smoke weed every month. And then after that, no mas. So I bought an eighth right. every month, right. smoked it in four days, <laughs> drank. And That's how you do it, baby. Yeah, just went. And I have low body fat, THC stored in fat cells. So if you're a fat person, this isn't going to work for you. Just so you know. <laughs> Just putting it out there. <laughs> Not everybody can do this regimen. But I was skinny. Yeah. I was drinking a lot. And then I had a friend who liked to throw darts, which meant do cocaine and throw darts. So I started doing cocaine kind of a lot for like a summer. Mm. I did cocaine like a lot, bro. <laughs> and cocaine's three days. Yeah. If you're doing a bunch. You know what I mean? Right. So you could do that basically a couple times a week until the <laughs> test comes. And then I got so good at darts. I, I'll <laughs> fuck you up at darts, bro. Yeah, I used to play a lot of darts. Yeah, I'm not great at pool. Like I'm, I've got, what do they call it when you throw the arrow into the back of another arrow? I got that one. Okay. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> okay. I, I don't even know what it's called, but I'm the best yeah, at Yeah, I understand what you're saying. But I'm going to figure this out. I'm okay at pool, and I... I usually beat most people. Me and you have had some good games. <laughs> Dude, I'll beat your ass. Yeah, you've said that before, and I beat I just you right talk after. Shit. Yeah. yeah, just saying. But well, you put me in a headlock. I'm okay so at pool, <laughs> but I'm better at darts, and that's because of that summer. Okay. Why is your dog? My barking? dog's freaking out. We're gonna go check on this. We're Let's gonna go take kill a break. this murderer. What are you doing? Taking off this dog butthole juice. Taking off the pop filter? Replacing it with another. All right. You goddamn right. Yeah, Dave's uh, a little bit preoccupied. My dog licked the pop filter. He therefore thinks that it will give him the coronavirus. So he's replacing it with the guest pop filter, which is most likely to give him coronavirus. <laughs> Dude, this one doesn't have your dog's butthole juice on it. Uh, I watched your dog I lick its ass for surprised. five minutes when you went to the bathroom. Like she was just getting. Oh, in that there. was just a preview of what goes on. She Four licks play, her ass if you will. most of the day. Yeah. Oh, okay. She's an ass licking. Well, in that case. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll pick that up later. No problem. <laughs> Dude, I'll grab some tweezers and pick it up. Don't worry. Doesn't matter. I'm not... I feel like my dog's asshole <laughs> tongue <laughs> has probably improved my immune system at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't allow her to lick me in the mouth, but it's happened. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, you, She's you aggressive. Welcome it. You welcome it. I've seen you I do wouldn't it. say that, but yeah. No. I wouldn't say it's sunny outside, but that's because it's not. <laughs> that that was the wrong time. It was a shittier joke than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> that was perfect. I thought it was going to no. be good. It was great, actually. Yeah, I actually put the blame of that on put you. Put a writing exercise on that joke. Like, seriously. Yeah, feel free to steal it, is what Dave said. Yeah, dude, I don't give a shit, dude. Amazon Prime truck over there. Dave's Toilet. still thinking about robbing a trailer that's across the river. Dude, that's from, like, episodes ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, actually, just, like, a couple hours. Yeah. An episode ago, maybe. But, yeah, Dave's still thinking about being a criminal, which is fun. I, I understand. He used to be a junkie. Now he's laid off. The kid's trying to make money. What are you going to do? No, yeah, dude. Me? Um, I, imme I immediately thought of selling dope. Not See, I thought about selling my fucking free shift meals to homeless people. Okay. For a cigarette. That's actually a good idea. For a cigarette? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's what they would do. Maybe a pack but of cigarettes. I'll give, I'll give it to them for like two bucks. Two bucks? No, I'm not going to give away my fucking food. Are you crazy? <laughs> Beat their ass and take their change. Okay. Well, I feel like you're being very confrontational and... Well, because you confusing sick your dog on me. You told your dog to attack me a minute ago, so now I'm uh, I'm hostile. And what'd she do? She licked my nuts. She approached you 
very slowly <laughs> <laughs> in a friendly manner. Yeah, because she loves me. That's what I keep telling you. She's me. like, dude. I mean, I I could do without this fucking Brian. But, so if I but, asked you to come let my dog out, would yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. You'd be comfortable with that. Yes. You'd be comfortable. My dog wouldn't eat your dick. No, absolutely not. I mean, she loves me more than you, so yeah, for she's sure. expecting you to leave. So she's right, right. expecting somebody like me to come along and take care of her because right. I love her more and she loves me more as a result. Like a sugar daddy situation. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just how it is. Even though you've never owned a pet and frankly not the best plant owner i've seen i mean i that's true <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah <laughs> you got that right fair enough uh the hype button i don't know when to hit it it's so. been so used it's been used so recent <laughs> or <laughs> what it hasn't been used much i'm a fucking idiot and i'm getting drunk if we're being honest and you're the vibe cop apparently i'm the vibe cop. <laughs> you're in Come charge of energies <laughs> shout out to Bubba McComb at Sad Boy Shinobi on Instagram. Is that his shirt? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I gave him one. He gave me one. It was oh, that's a, nice. It was a beautiful thing. Hand job? Yeah. Well, it was a and Dutch then you rudder. Shirts after. It wasn't gay. I didn't touch his dick. He didn't touch my dick. I just worked his arm. You know what you I mean? Pulled a Kate McLaughlin. Use your feet. Uh, I thought about it, but I'm yeah. not that talented. I got a trick ankle. He's yeah. too short for you, anyway. Yeah, he he really is. You can't yeah. 69 that foot. You really can't. Fuck. Uh, speaking of Kate McLaughlin, if you haven't seen her YouTube videos recently I have of not. makeup with Kate, uh, follow Kate McLaughlin on Facebook and Instagram. Is it Kate, hilarious? Yeah, Kate Gluck Gluck on Instagram. <laughs> uh, she does makeup with Kate, and they're all on YouTube as well. Kate McLaughlin, F- check them out because they are fucking hilarious. They're t- so ridiculous. I I, I I saw that she posted it but I have not watched They're them ridiculous. I've I've been waiting to watch them on my TV. You know what I mean? Oh, I really? see them on my phone, and I don't watch them. You wait. I wait until I get to my TV. Okay. And then me and Kelly watch them together. <laughs> and crack up. How yeah. long are the videos? Like six minutes. Perfect. You know? yeah, yeah. Five, oh, six man. minutes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to watch that when I get home with Kelly. You should. Tonight. They're fucking hilarious. I thought about- Is she up to three now? Yeah. I Thanks. thought about playing her newest one because I saw it while I was taking a piss one of these times. I thought about playing her newest one on the podcast, but I don't know how to pipe it in short of putting those headphones on that microphone ah. and maybe doing it that way. But, yeah, just go watch Kate McLaughlin. Always. She's the best in town. I agree. I actually Her agree. and Callie. Callie, they're very different, and... But they both. I handle, still think they're both the best. They both handle pressure in the same, like same but different. You know what I mean? Just yeah. so professional. Like Kate is so hard to shake, and Callie's similar. Like I love Kate. Like Kate's really, like I lo- so I love sarcastic. her material. Like, but what I love the most is when somebody heckles her, because she always has a different way to make them feel like fucking idiots. You know? And every like, time I talk so, to her, she makes me feel like a so real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, like, for saying words. <laughs> She's great at she's that. She's been on this I podcast don't... twice, and both times, everything I said, just feel like the worst person in the world. Yeah, she's, and brilliant. I respect that. Yeah, well, her mom's a politician, so yeah. <laughs> it runs in the blood. But she does it without worrying about running for office, which I love even more because she's just like, "Bitch, I changed a tampon on acid. <laughs> Stop being a <laughs> pussy." You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Me and Kate. So the first time we were ever in the same venue, I don't know if we ever met, but was at Global Dance Festival. That's the venue she changed her tampon on acid in, uh-huh. and I was there. So I don't know if we met necessarily. When was this? Uh, Years ago. Years. I don't know. Before I got arrested. So, oh, okay. A long time ago. Yeah. Like 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. But Red Rocks... We were at the same global dance festival when she had to change that tampon and acid. And I realized three hits of acid is too much to be in a group of people on. And you know what I mean? We both changed that night and we were both there at the same time. So I feel like we mm. have that connection. <laughs> <laughs> you, guys got a, you got a bloody connection. Yeah. Too much acid. And we we're in the same <laughs> place. We we're basically on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah, you were on your period. She was on hers. Same, same. Absolutely. Yeah. 
for sure yeah i I grabbed phil's shoulders and was like do not let me take any more drugs <laughs> he was like Pussy. me neither but it was three hits of acid you know that's a lot it was a lot i would be i'd be fucked up well I'd we trip real hard we were rookies and we decided to take this next step of drugs halfway through a concert that only lasts four hours mm. you know what i mean right. so by the time the concert is over we're peaking, peaking. Yeah. exactly so the ride home just serendipitously happened when's the last time you heard that word <laughs> i like it <laughs> but just happened to work out you know what i mean like we, 1995 like we were like where's the cabs and they were like just kept pointing us in different directions and we kept asking where's the cab they were like that way so we finally got there and we ran into a friend from Farmington and he was just like a hippie friend, dreadlocks. He was just like, you guys need a ride? <laughs> and we we're on three hits acid peaking, dude. And to see a friendly face, you're just like, please, God, <laughs> yeah. give us a ride. Like, Fuck yeah. And yeah, then there was a drum circle that started, which then, you know. There was security that kicked <laughs> us out because of about 20 minutes later. Because you start a drum circle and everybody's on a lot of drugs, like, you're going to get a crowd, you know, mm -hmm. in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. People are going to join the fun, you know, and that mm -hmm. happened. And then security was like, you break this up now or we're going to start searching cars. <laughs> and everybody just fucking dips. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here it comes. What? The earth is jizzing. Oh, it's raining. Yeah. Damn it. You're you have an interesting mind. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the earth is jizzing. <laughs> it looks like it according to the window. Yeah, it's all money it's like shots. Some faces to you, I've huh? seen. <laughs> yeah. How much porn do you watch? Not much. No. I'm not a big fan to be honest. Like how many times a week? Three. <laughs> what is that bad? No, I don't know. I seriously, it's a I don't regular. Watch, I mean, maybe two to three. I don't yeah, watch much. No, more. I, I'm on the same par. Two to three. I yeah, don't. I have a regular partner if yes. I want to fuck. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's possible. But two to three, yeah, for sure. I don't think that's a lot. But when it, you were like not much, I I kind of expected like when I said how much a week, I kind of expected think? like maybe a couple times a month, like. I don't oh, know. Well, when no, when two, somebody three? says not much, it's hard to judge. Well, dude, based on what I hear, fucking these savages, no, savages. out there talk about jerking off five, six times a day. Yeah. I'm like, dude, yeah, that is m two weeks for me. Agreed. Yeah. It's, I mean, whatever. I'm weird. I don't care. No, I don't. I, I don't yeah, I maybe shit. jerk off now twice a week. It, I don't because I'm trying to be there for my lady. What's well, that? And it's just, dude, I don't know, man. And also, I'm an old man now. As of today, I'm 34, so I'm going to die tomorrow. And you should check out that blue chew. <laughs> I know. I thought about it, dude. No. So a friend of mine who's on the Whiskey Reel uh, talked about it on this today's episode of the Whiskey Reel. Uh, he tried blue chew, and he was like, bro, it's something to keep in the quiver, you know? It's <laughs> yeah, something to keep yeah. in the drawer. Right. Just because if, if you know shit's going down, it's a special occasion, you know <laughs> what I mean? And you want to rock your lady's world, he was like, you can definitely do it. Dude, no doubt. Which <laughs> have you seen that? now makes me... <laughs> have you seen that Andrew Schultz yeah, 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 promo? I've, I've seen them all. Yeah, yeah. when he's doing cock push-ups. <laughs> yes. He's like, I'm doing these no-handed. He, he, I think he revolutionized the way people do ads. Like he's, Mark, 100%. He's done them different than most yeah, the, the best I've seen, and they're the funniest. And his blue chew ads when he's like walking out of the room, and he's like, hold on, babe. <laughs> he's got a cowboy, <laughs> cowboy hat, hat, and he puts it over his dick, and he's like, whoa. <laughs> what are you doing in here? And then he takes his hand off, and he's like, oh, I'm just on blue chew. You know? That that shit's but his stand-up's getting old to me, dude. Yeah, Every, yeah. Like, I is don't it even, just the crowd work? I, it's just that. I, no, I love crowd work. Con honestly, yeah. But what stand-up are you watching? What he releases? No, I watch is crowd everything work. he releases. Yeah, but it's crowd well, work. Well, but I have stopped watching everything he releases. Is what I'm saying, is because it's just like the same thing every time. Cause it's crowd he, work. I dog. know, but it's the same fucking shit. Whereas you look at Big J, dude. It, well, big he's J. a true big. He's a true crowd work expert. I'm not saying Andrew Schultz is too. I'm not talking shit. Obviously, I'm nowhere. 
I, I, you know, I could never do what he does. I'm, I, I, I'm just sick of just seeing the same old thing where he just like fucking makes a racial joke and slaps the fucking mic to his leg every time he does it and laughs at his jokes. Yeah. I'm over it. That's a I'm gimme. just like, yeah. it's sick. It, I'm like, I'm just sick of it, dude. Like, I, I, not in a bad way. I'm just like, you know, it's he, like I told you for a while when I first found that dude, like, I was like, this is my favorite comic, and I and everything he does i respect but dude i'm just i i can't watch his like same shit. sets anymore yeah. because it just all seems the same to me but the shit he puts on youtube is crowd work which makes sense that he would use similar tricks but it's all always but a racial thing yeah it's a racial joke every and time. he slaps his knee yeah it's, every time yeah and, and he's one of the best that's ever done it and yeah i truly have respect for, nothing but, but respect for him but would you maybe say that you've just kind of overloaded on maybe. his content yeah that's quite even a though you're just taking in what he's putting out you know like i mean yes, like you do that, that's in your butthole that's, yeah exactly dude i mean it's <laughs> but you're just taking out. in what he's putting out yeah and man, i just think i'm starting to like maybe you're just overloaded on it i'm queefing out my butt right right and so it's time we've all been there yeah what are you, what are you gonna so do i'm just like waiting for it to like refill with dryness before <laughs> i take them in again <laughs> refill dry <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah big j will do that for you <laughs> dude big j and dan Sutter don't get old to me no big j give it time Dude, you said that I, about Andrew Schultz six months ago. Okay, you're but like what I'm he's the best. That, is I've been watching okay, and listening right, right, to Big right. J and Dan for years, okay. and that's never happened. Fair enough. Fair There's enough. something, and that's that's what I'm saying. It's like I truly respect that guy. I, I just seems like he's figured out a hack, like a cheat code. I mean, God, for I, live I shows, say, you can't argue with it. Like a different crowd. Yeah, he's every got a, night. It's like a formula. Yeah, almost exactly. But like, and again, dude, it's funny as fuck, dude. I just like, it doesn't do for me now what it did for me like six months ago. You know, and like you've evolved like the coronavirus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, I got like two hundred seventy-five thousand videos of Andrew Schultz in my head. Yeah. Instead of cases of Corona. Yeah, yeah and no, that's that what we're trying work. to do with these quarantine videos. We're putting <laughs> one out every other day. Yeah, it's going to be let, crazy. And we're letting everybody know on the corner of 550 and 160, there's an Amazon Prime trailer ready full of toilet paper. Go get it. Yeah, we don't know what's in it. But, yeah, Dave's guessing toilet paper. I feel like it's a desperation I'm guess. I'm looking through the w walls. He's a man who is controlled by his emotions. <laughs> And he's I'm scared by my of wiping his ass with I'm his hands. I'm controlled by my shits. Yeah, exactly. Same, same. It's not emotional. Uh, it's I disagree. <laughs> my shits are very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I guess sometimes they run like tears, but other times they're just <laughs> other times they're just like thick, like hiccups. So I don't know. Thick like hiccups. <laughs> Hashtag thick like hip hiccups. I can't even say it. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> well, you're the vibe cop, so you should know. Yeah, hashtag vibe cop. Shout out to... You keep looking Bubba at the computer McCown. like you just want to end this. No, I'm just making sure it's working. Because <laughs> if it stops working, there will be a message that says recording was stopped. <laughs> it happened. Did it? You want Jeff Stonick and Josh and Jacob were here? Yeah. yeah. It happened. So... No. Man, what amateurs, dude? They're making that shit stop. Yeah, it was. It's all their fault, dude. I, yeah. I, I hooked up with them in the fucking Denver, and it was awesome. Yeah, they're great. Jeff Stonick is fucking. He's such a nice dude, and he's he's funny as fuck too. By the way, like the mic that I was at, where it was like the week that somebody came down with Corona in Denver, and I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do this mic. But um, man. He went up there and he murdered. Like he was one of the funnier people that went up that night. Yeah, was, yeah, and yeah, Jeff Stonick. And then um, I didn't get to see uh, jo um, Josh and Elliot go up that night. But the next night, Josh uh, and Jacob Jonas, Josh Emerson, and Jacob Jonas did the spelling bee with us, the drunken spelling bee on East Colfax, and that yeah. was a blast, dude. Like we had a good time. They're silly, silly, yeah, silly bitches. We were the least funny part of the show. Oh, I'll tell you the funniest part of the show, though, was it was complete accident. and It wasn't anything any of the comedians said. I mean, I kind of said something after this happened, 
but I'll tell you what happened. So this lady was told, spell the word tyranny. And this is the drunken spelling bee. And she goes, tyranny, T-R-A-N-N-Y. And I said, girl, you just spelled tranny. And she's like, yeah, you think I didn't do that on purpose? <laughs> like, she's really trying to play it off hard like she did that on purpose. But it was hilarious because she spelled the word tranny yeah. and said tyranny. And then, yeah, the whole room was uh, laughing because she clearly fucked up. But then they didn't want to be laughing because it's a liberal Hate scene. Yeah. Ooh, very liberal. Can't say tranny. Not in Denver. Not unless you're talking. You can say in Phoenix, baby. You can say it in the fucking auto zone, too. That's fair. (laughs) You can't say it in fucking Denver. What do Denver auto zones do, man? Hey, we got to go work on this trans... This transmission. I mean... Fucking... That's still a tranny in auto zone. I think they're all trannies. (laughs) I don't know who I'm talking about, but they are. I lost the crap. Yeah, I've seen it happen more than once. I've seen an Amazon truck full of toilet paper, but nobody listens. All right. If you want to break into that Amazon truck, we can do it, dog. Oh, you don't got to tell me, dude. I wasn't going to involve you because you have the word cop on your shirt. That's tr- fair. I don't trust you. That's fair. Anyway, I thought it was funny. She was supposed to spell tyranny. She said T-R-A-N-N-Y, tranny. Or tyranny. <laughs> no. Yeah, right, she fucked up. I wish yeah. I didn't tell that story. That sucked. It's okay. What can you do, man? It's quarantine. What can you do? Dude, she should have been quarantined. <laughs> Why? Because she was trans. Because <laughs> she's clearly transphobic. She spelled trans. Never mind. <laughs> uh, people are so weird with words, dude. You should pop that in a little <laughs> more. There you go. That's what he said. Okay. Tranny. Fair enough. Yeah. You got any other fun stories? I got lots of them. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, oh, you just want this to end. I see. Okay. No. Yep. I was just seeing how just long we're going. You just look. Dude, yeah, I got stories. Hmm. We don't have to tell stories. We can talk about how the quarantine's going. Let's do that. Yeah. You and your wife's been spending fighting. a lot of time together? Yeah. Well, we were fighting real bad before it started. And so, like, we weren't really talking for a couple of days before it started. And then the quarantine started. And then we had to start moving. So we right. were in, like... Teamwork? A, well, it was... Dude, the past few days have been hell, to be honest. Like, <laughs> you know, like, things have been good with Kat and I for the past couple of days. But, man, we just... Dude, we're a couple... I, I, that's why I don't feel bad talking about this, dude. Like, she might get embarrassed for half a second, but then she'll realize, well, everybody goes through this, dude. Like, every couple goes through bad fighting periods. We just went through a bad fighting period, like, right as the quarantine was starting. Right. So it was tense and awful in the house. And then on top of that, I got laid off my job. Then the next day, she got laid off her job. Then the next day, we had to start moving, you know? So it was just like a bunch of stressful shit like i mean for sure not that i'm saying we were not that it was like a close to divorce type of thing but i'm saying like they say the most common causes of stress are like divorce moving and um getting fired from your job for sure and like we were just having intense fighting we both got laid off from our jobs and had to move as the quarantine started yeah so like it was just it's just it was been it's it's been ultra stressful but um but yeah I mean since since then like you know like everything's good with us now as you saw from the phone call like I mean we're we're fine we're talking and we're happy and we got most of our shit moved over and again like I said like moving during a quarantine best idea ever right I mean dude it gives you something to do I mean you don't have to encounter other people I mean you can take your time kind of because straight up wherever you're living now nobody's coming to check that place out anytime soon right and then um and then as far as my job goes man like they're giving us free food every day like we worked like i mean i work for the greatest people in the world I so feel cool like. yeah i'm so lucky and 
and uh, and before I knew that was happening, I went and you know bought you know a couple hundred bucks worth of food. So like you know we got food at the new place, all utilities, Wi-Fi, so everything's good now. It was just a very stressful first week of quarantine. For sure, yeah, <laughs> you and know? me and, and nobody, I didn't talk to anybody about it. Right, yeah, me and my girlfriend been spending way more time together than usual. Just her roommate. How's that been? It's been good, you know, but like her roommate got home from Vegas and she was already here when that happened. So she's been kind of avoiding that situation just in case, you know, absolutely. And, uh, you know, just spending a lot of time together. There's definitely been some arguments like it's sure. And we've had to really like, you know, it's a good time to figure out communication and shit because that's real. Because resentment builds up quietly because you're not trying to cause a tiff or whatever. Yeah. Then something happens and then, you know, the communication thing eventually breaks down into a conversation about how you got to communicate better. And we've kind of figured that out or, well, that's you know, good. we're yeah. working on it, you know. Well, yeah. But and y'all are in your there's infancy, been, yeah, you know, there's, as far as relationship. So that's good that you're already working on there's it. There's been more arguments than ever really recently just well, dude, because we're spending stress. so much time yeah. together and jobs are on the line and yeah, yeah everybody's just stressed in general yeah dude even when like even in a, any given cir- circumstance man like cat and i like, we've been together over 10 years now man like we have moved all over the country together and experienced like, like dude we will get snappy with each other on a just a regular given typical like we got a move day yeah. but in this case we were already like hating each other we both got fired and then the quarantine started and you know it, and we were able to get through it because it's just you just what happens every time and i'm sure this happens with you and kelly too is like you guys realize, all right, we're just kind of being extra snappy because yeah. because of all the pressure we feel. It's Somebody kind of crosses a line. It's stress, ultimately. And then you recognize it. You know, sure, and, and yeah, I mean, maybe like, that's what happens, yeah. And Well, what happened just like last night or the night before, I crossed the line, and I didn't realize it until after it happened because it was just like kind of back and forth, mm-hmm. and I, I'm a one-upper of <laughs> So you became an extra dick? Yeah. Yeah. So I went up to it, and it was just crossing the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to apologize for it eventually. But it all comes down to stress is my point, For sure. It was, yeah, it was a whole thing. Every, like, a lot of our tiffs in the past have been during stressful moments, you know? And in this case, it was like we had already gotten into a big fight, like a real big fight. And then we had the added stresses of moving, getting fired, and uh you know having to stay at home together yeah. all in one like all in two days you know for and sure it was it was a little and tough. you guys are used to living together yeah so that I, and honestly i think that that's a that's a good thing for us because yeah. like since we are so used to living together i mean dude we've lived in fucking just a single bedroom together yeah, for sure for a while we've lived in multiple studio apartments like i mean we've lived in course qu- close quarters like most of our time together right in 10 years and um you know so like we're used to that part but with these added like stra- we're also used to being able to go to work and right. getting away and thinking yeah me and kelly weren't used to living together you know yeah so, so that might so be it too. So there's just like extra, just the recent move-in shit might be, going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just because she's trying to stay away there's from. So many yeah. dynamics to relationships that it's crazy. Add different factors and elements, man. And it, man, it's like, what? There's nothing to be ashamed of, dude. Every fucking couple goes through shit like that. For sure, you and, know. But I think it's good. I think you have to. Well, hit, you grow from it. Typically. I think you have to hit hard times to see if it's worth it as well that's just like is point. this person worth it that's right because i've hit hard times with people and just been like nope <laughs> nope i'm out this is not worth it that's right yes and i have too you, that's yeah. a good point dude yeah you're, i didn't think about it like that but you're absolutely right like because i've been there too like where i just just straight up yeah literally i have literally 
walked out of a girl's house at 2 p.m. in the afternoon in the middle of a conversation and never talked to her again because huh? I was like, this is not worth it. But, you know, with Kat, it's totally worth it to me. You For know? sure. So, then like, that's why I'm saying those are valuable situations. Right. Like any tough situation in a relationship situation, I think is good because you realize it's either worth it or it's not. And if it is worth it, then you you communicate, work through it or whatever. But yeah. if it's not, you just fucking bail. And <laughs> I think that's yeah. as valuable as the other. I agree. Yeah. 100%. Because yeah. staying with something or somebody you're not fucking compatible just, with is That's stupid. shooting yourself in the foot, dude. Uh, and sometimes the sex is really <laughs> good. I get it. I get it. But it's not worth it. No. Sometimes you get a good joke out of it. Sure. <laughs> See, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. I just happened to start comedy way. when I was single. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, for the I've first time been with the years. same woman yeah. since I've been doing comedy. So, Yeah, you start comedy in a single period. <laughs> and then you got jokes about that. And then you get into a real relationship. And now you got to figure out how to tell those jokes without pissing off. I've wondered about that, about your jokes, and how she feels about that. I don't. I, I rarely feel like, combine I them. I feel like she gets more and more sick of them each time she hears. Hundred percent. Does she? Hundred percent. Like I see her. I I watch her. That's why I didn't tell. Her laughter has minimalized, like if, like uh, exponentially each time. Yeah, told that's her. why I didn't tell those jokes for a long time. You know. Yeah. I just kind of let them sit. But then but you got to tell them. Some opportunities came along, and I was like, "Well, these are my bangers." So you got to <laughs> fucking bring them back to life. Yeah. But I'm working on how to, you Don't know, work on that. Tell dude. that whole she needs story. To work on being no, okay I'm with working it. on how to tell that whole story in my bit because so much more of my material is becoming about having a girlfriend. So I got to figure out how to, you know, make that transition in a set. Mm. If it's more sense. than five minutes, yeah. not for five minutes. Yeah. But, I, but I'm also saying, uh, and I've, no, she's cool, Talk dude. To, yeah. She's yeah. gravy. Because like, I'm not writing new jokes about fucking strangers. No, yeah. exactly. The this same is jokes. all old shit. <laughs> yeah. This is like, you know, it's like, I've, I mean, dude, I've asked Kat, like, hey, will it bother you if I say this? And if she says yes, I fucking respect her because I fucking respect her. Yeah. But like, man, there's sometimes I just don't even... <laughs> And I I just go for it. And then, like, maybe later she'll tell me, like, yo, I didn't like that. And I'm like, hey, that's what happened. I'm sorry. I have to talk about it. Like, it really happened. And not everything you say on stage is real. Well. You know, or or how you meant to portray it. You, uh, what's that called? It's Uh, not all intentional. Yeah. What I mean to say. It's some hyper, there's hyperbole. For sure. Absolutely. But sometimes it just comes off worse than you meant to portray you know what i mean sometimes you wrote it better but when you're saying it on stage it just doesn't come out that way yeah and then you have to explain yourself and you're like i i don't know what happened Uh, if we're being honest that's not even what i meant to say but it happens sometimes man but and sometimes you tell the truth on stage and that's even worse (laughs) yeah i know about that lost me booty calls that's lost me mostly it's just booty calls me, let's be got, honest it's mostly lost me i booty. haven't lost anything from it but i've gotten into many fights yeah. I said well stage. because you were in a relationship i was single i lost partners because of what i said on <laughs> and on the podcast 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. more on the podcast <coughs> yeah the a- booty call i've had one true booty call where we had no other contact other than hooking up (laughs) like we got together we fucked we left like there was no hanging out Mm -hmm. at all Mm -hmm. and she listened to one podcast (laughs) gone dude i got a kind of a funny booty call story let's hear it it was when i was in high school um i was like a really shy kid like like i like people liked me like i got voted most friendliest or whatever <laughs> i don't know if that's a good thing or not like um, yeah yeah exactly the gayest but uh but like no but like 
I like the bus, and it right. ju- but it just so happened like I was just not very, like I was shy. So Me but too. when I got to high school, there was this new girl that start that started at our school. Perfect. She was fine as hell, and she immediately started dating the starting pitcher for our baseball team, which was at in East Cobb, Georgia, at Kale High School, and it is literally like a farm team for the uh, minor leagues. I mean, like East right. Cobb baseball. Like, our, So, for example, another guy I played with and against, he's the catcher for the Braves now. Nice. And, and like, you know, and, like, so this guy, like, she moved uh, to our school and immediately started dating this, the starting pitcher for our high school baseball team. Top dog. Top dog. And then there was a party one night at her house, and I lived just like a mile down the road. It's actually in the same neighborhood where I got my DUI uh, for flipping a car. I was by myself. Like there was no other cars into involved. Somebody's uh, yard. Front yard. Yeah, and yeah. I tried to run away, and he tackled me. It's a great joke. But it's a fucking shitty story, but great it, joke. It's a great story, but it sucks that it happened. But anyway, so like she was like a mile down the road. We went to a party. I had no idea she was like digging me and plus I, I in my mind i'm just like she's starting pitcher's fucking girlfriend so that we all go to a party at her house and then go home i go home i go to sleep i wake up in the middle of the night to my phone ringing and it's this girl jess whose house we were just at, at the party the new girl who's already dating the starting pitcher mm-hmm. and she's like i want you to come over and i was like uh, I don't have any way to get over there. And it was the middle of the night, and I'm totally taken aback. I'm very shy. Like, I don't know what to say. And she's like, I'll just come pick you up. What's your address? And I gave her my address. She came pick me up, took me back to her house, and <laughs> she just started, like, ba- ba- we just started banging immediately. And then, like, I think I came really fast the first time. And she was just like, "That's all right, we'll go again." And so what a she, trooper! <laughs> and then she banged me again. And then her dad came into the room, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And he was like, "Oh hey, honey, I was just making sure you're okay." <laughs> While I'm like laying there, it was the weirdest thing ever. Was she on top? Yeah, she was on top. And so just tits <laughs> out, just tits plus ass out. And then like anyway, so. I had no idea. She had this big crush on me the whole time. So she, we banged a few times that night, and then she drove me back. And then the next day, I was working at Target at the time, and I was in high school still. And I had told my friends what happened. And so I, I go to mistake. I go into work <laughs> Target, and I come out for my shift that night. And on my windshield of my car, there's a baseball that says, I know what you did. <laughs> And then it's, like, signed by the pitcher of the, the team. Was it, like, in your windshield? Not, like, broken. Okay. No, it was just on it. Okay. Because it wasn't him. It was my friends just trying to scare me because I fucked his girlfriend, like, this, like, the most popular girl in school. Good for and you. I, and, and, and they were just trying to scare me by putting the baseball on my windshield and That's said, rude. I know what you did last night, or That's whatever rude. it was. It was just pretty funny, dude. It. It's a silly thing to do, I, but it's rude. I honestly thought it was him, though. Like yeah. They didn't let me know it was a joke for like a day or two. No, they I were fucked a friends. girl in high school that uh, her boyfriend did find out, and it was not like we never <laughs> actually fought, but there was like some anxiety. I think that's what happened, And too. I was just a little fella. Like, I was not... I didn't grow to like senior year. <laughs> so like I just got lucky and fucked a girl, you know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, some dude was <laughs> real mad at me. Yeah. I, dude, this guy did find out and he never fought me or anything. He just stopped talking to me. And I. It, That's fine. And it, this girl just refused. Like, what a slut. In hindsight, what a slut. Like, she would just like be with him in the halls. And then she'd walk away from him and walk past me and just, like, slide her hand against mine and shit. Like, god damn it. You are a whore, dude. 
kind of sexy trying to though. get i know it is but like she's but trying, when you're like trying the to get nerd. me killed dude yeah i wasn't the like, nerd but i wasn't more, a popular you know when you're yeah okay so when you're not like the popular kid like yeah. me I, I was never like the popular kid so but when you're like the was. average dude yeah and the hot chick in school the popular chick mm-hmm. gives you attention especially if you're fucking her from <laughs> da, 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 yeah. that that's awesome yeah <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, it was. It was definitely funny, or fun, I should say. Yeah. But like, when you're growing up, you got to be a little more worried like, about that. But man, it just like it didn't put things into perspective for me until my friends put that baseball on my windshield, and they didn't let me know it was them for a couple of days. I was scared, dude. I was like, this dude's gonna kill me. He was like the hardest throwing. I mean, dude. He was. I played baseball with him. He was awesome, dude. Like, and I thought he was going pros, and I thought. I mean, and I knew he could beat me up. Yeah, I actually got beat up for the things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, a lot of times, but it happened. Yeah, yeah. What a fucking slut. Not you. I was, was flashbacks. I'm Sorry. still slut. Oh, I mean, I have a girlfriend now, but if I didn't, I'm a slut. Yeah. Yeah. Before that. Well, sluts are prostitutes, prostitutes, sluts. What? Yeah, I don't know if you've heard my cuckold joke, but your boy's been laid off, so yeah, I'll fuck your wife for money. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a joke, that's just a statement. But you just do it. Ke- Kelly will join, right? Probably not. Oh. Well. I mean, you maybe. You fire her then. Maybe if you have the exceptional <laughs> case, you know. You got a couple of dimies, a couple of dimey dimies <laughs> that are willing to pay somebody to fuck their wife. Uh, that's, that's just rare. It's just weird, it's dude. Rare. It's so weird. I don't know how people do that. It it makes it makes me weird. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm really not interested in another dude fucking my nope my lady. Nope. They love that here, dude. <laughs> One of the stupidest jokes I ever said. <laughs> I used to say when I opened up at the Strader was Durango's like a giant playground. Swingers everywhere. <laughs> I remember. They really are, dude. It's so weird to me, dude. No, it's a town of they bang each other. fucking savages. They're bangers. Well, bangers and curves. I feel like that happens when people get married young, maybe, and they get older, and they're just like, all right, I respect you as a person. You respect me as a person. Why can't we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah fucking weirdos dude i agree no offense all you weirdos all right offense i have nothing against i don't i don't give a shit what they choose to do but yeah for the moment i'm but definitely the only one that's gonna fuck my lady you got damn right man don't bring that shit on me (laughs) i'll fucking throw a goddamn portable heater in your face while it's on high (laughs) it's like very low-key threat (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just looked at the, what was around me. I'm kind of dumb, so I need visual aids. I saw a heater portable. Imagine it on I. Mm. Don't worry about it. I'm from Georgia and Poland, so that's bad. Yeah. Extra dumb. Luckily, dumb means <laughs> pull off. Big dick. Yeah. That, that's ain't. true, dude. We got the biggest dicks in Europe, so I got that Polish. That uh, Polish <laughs> I decided not to finish it. <laughs> right Polish up. sausage. We got anything what? you want to promote? <laughs> yeah, dude. There's Polish sausages available at City Market. Get relish, tomatoes, or Dave's house. Uh, diced onion, get diced um, uh, um, cucumber. Oh, I'm alert. No, don't do that. But get buns and then Polish sausage and throw then diced onion. Throw avocado Dave's face. Oh, and also I'll be hosting the... Uh, uh, the fucking world's fastest Polish sausage eating contest. And also, it's um, just going to be me and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see how fucking fast he can swallow this <gasps> shit. Uh, my guess is fast. Uh, my yeah. guess is it's going to be on ESPN top 10 because nothing else. Is if corn hell, if corn holes on ESPN, if corn hell, <laughs> Cornhole's on ESPN, so can Polish sausage eating. Uh, you goddamn right, dude. I mean, Be, dude, it's um, really... I mean, if I was to guess, I would guess it's the tastiest, but that's just me. 
Yeah, Literally. that's a bit egotistical. Um, yeah, you got damn right, dude. We dude. were the first invaded by Hitler. You think we're not going to be egotistical after winning it? <laughs> yeah. Hashtag <laughs> World War Two. <II>. Yeah. <laughs> Way to be topical, dickhead. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, uh, Dave Oakley is my hero. He at Dave, at DaveOakley dot com. Yeah, Dave O <laughs>, laughs on social media. Uh, and if you work at the temp, de, uh, the Tempe Improv, it's uh, David Oakley at DaveOakley dot com. Yeah, he's a real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, he's the biggest one. Bye. <laughs> Drink and drive. So basically, my name is Trip. Yeah. And you can call me whatever you want. Uh, All right. I'm okay. just gonna be fly. Yeah. Give me some of that. Give me some of that. What it is you really bring it to the table, Jack? Get it chopping like a little lumber jack. Let the homie bring it back when I write a little rap, huh? What you think about that? Yeah. I know you ain't thinking this swag. Uh-huh. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to sound too cocky. I'm just feeling ah ah ah. Yep yep. All right. Ah uh, ah. Uh. With the homie still rapping on Dilla. Yeah. Rapping all the spots I live, the people know I killed them. That's right. They'll turn off the lights, give me a light. We the brightest in this building. And throw up them hands if y'all really feel me. That's some realness, it's chronic flow. No. Yeah, I got a chronic illness. And I want the world to feel this. Yo, that's just how I kill it. How do I care it then? Ah. They wondering about the end of doubt. Just put them headphones on, man. That's the dope. Yeah. Give them a dose of rap. rap. Then I can toast to that. Yeah. Knew that I hold my craft. Doing it, I'm in a soda rap. Yeah. This American cat. Yeah. But my ears ain't wet. My ears ain't wet. Been working, dog. Ooh. Working my ass to death. Oh, yeah, said it ain't easy. No. I never had no freebie. No. Them rappers giving handouts for that standout to completely. Better than Wheezy. Better than DZ. Better than Jay Z. This just crazy. Y'all so amazing. Never been lazy. When it comes to spin, my nobody wanna play me. Sit. I'm spinning. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Like the 4th of July Said oh my That record label must be out of their mind uh, I know that their flow and they better than mine uh, Yeah like they pulled this cat right out of the sky Yo I'm tired of these magicians They tricking the sinner's eyes Uh uh-uh, uh I keep trucking Pushing around in my bucket Coming up I'm 25 But man I'm feeling real lucky Got something big on the way I keep that radio bumping all season Ain't no reason that them stations Give me no love and I love it and I give it all to the public. I'm busting, I'm running, I'm jumping around. All of the dumbest prima donnas. Did they forget the day and come up from nothing? I want nothing of it. The front and man, I'm pushing my buttons, okay? I'm feeling ah, 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 yeah, yeah, all right.